What is the Gospel? An Introduction to John Part 2 The Lamb of God Who Takes Away the Sin of the World John Chapter 1 Verses 29 to 42 The next day John the Baptist saw Jesus coming towards him and declared Here's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptising with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptise with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptises with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and he watched Jesus walk by. He exclaimed, Look, here's the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We've found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Do you remember the two sentences we covered last time? Christ is our rightful Lord. We have rejected him. Now we're adding two more. The consequence of this is death. Christ has died in our place. It shouldn't really come as a surprise that if we reject the one in whom was life, the consequence is going to be death. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he called him something strange, but full of meaning for his original listeners, the Lamb of God. In the Exodus, God brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt after ten plagues. The final plague was the death of the firstborn. The Israelites were passed over, having been commanded to slaughter a lamb without blemish and put its blood on the doors of their houses. Pharaoh had said, Who's the Lord that I should heed him? And the consequence was death. The Israelites were no better than the Egyptians. All humankind rejects their rightful Lord every time they sin. But God told the Israelites to put their trust in him and the blood of a lamb. 
It was a sign for them. They obeyed and were saved. Jesus is the fulfilment of that sign. He lived a perfect life without blemish. He's the Son of God. He allowed himself to be killed and die in our place. The prophet Isaiah, some 600 years after the Exodus and 700 years before Christ, foretold this. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God in Christ took upon himself the just penalty for our sin, so that we could go free. This is grace, God's totally unmerited mercy shown to us by his supreme sacrifice of himself in our place. Like the Israelites, we now put our trust in the blood of the unblemished Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Christ is our rightful Lord. We have rejected him. The consequence of this is death. Christ has died in our place. If we receive him now as our Lord, we also receive him as our Saviour. We do a turnaround from making ourselves Lord to receiving Christ as Lord. That turnaround is called repentance. John the Baptist saw who Jesus was and told everyone, I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. He saw what many others could not. He said, among you stands one whom you do not know. Some people were looking for a great prophet who would speak God's words to them. Jesus is that, of course, and more. He's the very word of God made flesh. Some people were looking for a Messiah, or in Greek, Christ, literally one anointed by God for a special job. The prophet Samuel's mother, Hannah, had foretold, the Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Kings and priests were anointed in Old Testament times. Jesus is much more than them. He's the ruler of the whole earth and our eternal high priest. As today, some people just saw Jesus as a great teacher. Andrew and the other disciple were like that to start with, and they asked Jesus, Teacher, where are you staying? After an invitation to come and see, Andrew just wanted to find his brother Simon Peter and tell him, We've found the Messiah! John the Baptist was the one person recorded here who called Jesus the Lord from the beginning. He had seen that Jesus was the one foretold by the prophet Isaiah and openly declared, Make straight the way of the Lord. Acknowledging that Christ is our rightful Lord is not something easy that we do lightly. It means letting Christ take over our lives. It will only be at the very end of these six chapters that someone else, Simon Peter, calls Christ Lord. 
Christ is our rightful Lord. We rejected him. The consequence of this is death. Christ has died in our place. Acknowledging that Christ is our rightful Lord and receiving him into our lives as Lord, however, is the first step in responding to the gospel and moving from death to life. If you've already done this, praise God. Now let's hold out that life to others and tell them the gospel.